Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I hope you all have had a nice break so far. This video will be the first of nine in a new series where I will preview each St Kilda player before the commencement of the 2023 season to understand their potential impact on the on-field successes of the club in 2023. Each video will give 60 second previews for up to five players in order of jersey numbers, starting from one and ending on 45 which is subject to change for any further number changes. As number 2 is currently vacant, this video will only feature 4 players. Let's get started with number 1, Nick Caulfield. After a season of below par form and several small injury issues in 2021, 2022 didn't get much better for Nick Caulfield as his season was wiped out by a cruel ACL injury. This followed a reportedly career best preseason which had created high hopes for the medium defender to not only return but exceed the form he showed in 2020 that saw him selected in the AFL under 22's lineup and coming fifth in the Trevor Barker Award. On track for a fully successful rehabilitation, Coffield believes that he'll be better for it. He's grown a lot physically and mentally. Turning 24 in October this year and approaching his prime, it will be as important as any year for the Coff to establish himself in the starting 22, especially considering the defensive depth that is available in the squad going into the 2023 season. It would be nice to see him mould his game around Geelong's Tom Stewart, using his mobility, skills and intercept marking to his advantage in today's modern game. We'll move on to number 3, Zach Jones. 2022 didn't go to plan for the speedy inside ball as he only managed 13 out of 22 games due to form and personal reasons. He was unable to rekindle his explosiveness at the stoppage nor was he able to find the ball as much, as his average disposals dropped from 23.4 in 2021 to just 18.1 in 2022. By way of rating points, he had his worst season since 2015, which was his second season in the system. Looking forward to 2023, which is the last year of his contract, Jones will be motivated to recapture his best form by improving his fitness and recapturing his impact in a midfield that is now blessed with solid depth. Moving on to number 4, Jade Gresham. After starting the season on fire as an elite inside midfielder, the latter part of Gresham's 2022 season was disrupted by a meniscus tear that ended his season a month too early. Despite this, he still finished 7th in the BNF, highlighting his exceptional form prior to the injury. His ideal position going into 2023 has been questioned due to his impact in the forward line and unreliable kicking through the middle. Furthermore, youngster Marcus Windhagel is able to play Gresham's role almost just as well, prompting discussions surrounding the best way to utilise the Gresham's talents. Whatever it may be, Gresham's primary focus is likely to be on completing a full 23-game season to hopefully help the Saints to success in 2023. Gresham will go, and he can explode through the midfield. A couple of bounces, and that is a very clever kick. Number 5, Brad Crouch. In his second season as a Saint, Brad Crouch returned to his ball-winning best in the midfield as he averaged 27.2 disposals on his way to a 6th place finish in the Trevor Barker Award. He was a consistent cog in the midfield and showed a toughness that was at times rare to see in the team as he averaged a career-high 7.1 tackles which was 6th in the league. One knock on his game is his kicking efficiency and scoreboard impact as he only scored 7 goals for the season. To become an elite midfielder, this creativity and attacking threat is something Crouch will have to work on in 2023 to really elevate himself to the next level. Thank you for watching the first episode of this 9 video series. I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to like the video, drop a comment about any of the players that you think can have an impact next year, and make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next episode.